Today we're going to be coding ref, which stands for wrapped ETH. Ref wraps ETH into ERC20. When you deposit ETH, a ERC20 token is minted, and when you withdraw ETH, the ERC20 token is burnt. Ref is commonly used in many DeFi projects. Instead of writing two separate contracts, one for ETH and one for ERC20 tokens, you can write a single contract targeting the ERC20 token, and if that contract wants to support ETH, then all it has to do is interact with Ref instead of ETH. Okay, so let's write the code for Ref. Since Ref is an ERC20 contract, we'll first import the ERC20 token. You can use any ERC20 contract, for example, Open Zeppelin, or you might have written your own ERC20 contract. For this example, we'll import the ERC20 contract from Soulmate. Ref is ERC20, so we'll say Ref is ERC20. Next, we'll initialize the constructor, so I'll type constructor. And then we'll also initialize the parent contract, the ERC20. The parent contract takes three parameters, the name, the symbol, and the decimals. The name will be wrapped ether. Symbol will be all capital WEF. Decimals will be 18. Next, we'll define some events. We'll emit the event when there is a deposit, and we'll also emit the event when there is a withdrawal. So I'll say event deposit and then we'll log the sender and the amount address indexed account uint amount and likewise for withdrawal so i'll copy the event for deposit and then rename it to withdrawal we're going to need two functions a function to deposit function deposit for now we'll declare this as external and this will be payable and then we're also going to need a function to withdraw. Function withdraw. We will need to specify the amount that we're going to withdraw. So this is, we'll take in an input of uint amount. And this function will be external. So a user would send ETH by calling the function deposit. And the contract will mint a ERC20 token. When the user calls the withdrawal function, this will burn the ERC20 token and then send the ETH back. Let's write the code for deposit first. We'll first mint the ERC20 token by calling the internal function mint. This function is inherited by the ERC20 contract. It takes in two parameters, the address and the amount. The address will be message.sender and the amount will be stored in message.value. Next, we'll emit the event deposit. So I'll type emit deposit. And again, this will be message.sender message.value. And that completes the function deposit. Now, if a user directly sends ETH to this contract, we want to execute the fallback function and call the deposit function. So I'll declare a fallback by typing fallback external, and this will be payable, meaning that this contract can directly receive ether. When the fallback is triggered, we want to execute the function deposit. So here I'll type deposit. Now, Deposit, we declared it as external, but since we're calling it here, we need to change this to public. Okay, the last function that we're gonna code is withdraw. When a user calls withdraw, this contract will burn this much amount and send the exact amount of ETH back to the user. So we'll type burn from message.sender amount, and then we'll send the same amount of ETH by typing payable, message dot sender dot transfer amount and then lastly we'll emit the event withdraw emit withdraw to message dot sender for the amount now notice that we call the function burn before we sent the ether to message dot sender this is done to protect against reentrancy and that completes the function withdraw and the contract for ref let's now deploy this and then call the function deposit and withdraw so I'll hit Control S, and once the contract compiles, we'll go ahead and deploy it. So select ref, and then deploy it. And then we'll call the function deposit first, sending one ether. So I'll select one ether, and then call deposit. Let's check the balance of this account. Copy it, paste it here. And then we have one ether here. And let's now withdraw this one ether. 
So I'll copy this and then paste the full amount and then call withdraw. You can see here that the transaction was successful. And if I call the balance up again, the balance is now zero.